So uh, thank you for coming on. Uh, who's up next? Uh, who do I got with me is uh, St. John. Go ahead and introduce yourself and let everybody know where you're from. Right. Um, I'm St. John from the Bronx, New York. Um, I'm an engineer. I was a DJ. Uh, what else? It's pretty much, man. I'm, I'm just, you know. What Tell I mean? me about your upcoming um, in, um, in hip hop. Like, how did you uh, start getting in love with hip hop? Well, um, I grew up in a Spanish household. Okay. Uh, I only spoke Spanish to like the first grade. That's when my teachers told my parents, like, yo, y'all gotta start teaching this nigga English. Because <laughs> he's in school, in a yeah, Catholic school, school so. Yeah. You gotta start teaching him English. So I started listening to English. My brothers and shit, they was very involved in the streets. Okay. And, you know, I started listening oh, to them. Oh, you, you listen. mind me asking where, where, where? You said streets, where, where? Um, St. John's Ave. Okay. 149. Uh, Mapes, 182nd, you All know. Right. Uh, yeah, and that's pretty much it. They started listening to hip hop. Yeah. And I uh, just followed, you know, just listening to it. Like, you know, like, what do you remember, like, first listening to, like... Oh, like, big, like Tupac, big, and shit big, like Tupac. that, you know, and... Yeah, but it was mostly Spanish still, though. Yeah. Like, there was a lot of, like, Tonio Rosario yeah, yeah, yeah. and... Eddie Santiago. Uh, Eddie Santiago, <laughs> Jerry Redd, yeah, yeah, and yeah, shit. Yeah, But other than that... Did your parents like the rap? Did, okay. you have to, did you have to put them on to rap in order uh, to argue? They still like, like it to this day, you know? They, okay. they think it's just a whole bunch of blah, 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 but it's like... They're so Spanish, they just don't understand what's being said, you know? Mm -hmm. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's I got introduced to hip-hop by my bro my family, my brothers, you know? Half of my family really know English, the other half is strictly Spanish. Yeah. So it's like the English part of my family really introduced me to that. You know, my first actual song that I listened to ever was, like, Special Delivery. Special, oh, my God. You know, the, Special the, Delivery. The, the, the special and, Delivery. Um, the Nas shit. Oh, what's the Nas shit called? Man, the... Which one? Which one? You help me, help me. Let, let, which one? You, 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 oh, you gotta give me hints. You gotta give me hints. Oh, damn, I don't even know. Which Nas joint? Um, um, it's the the little party shit that he had brought out before. Oh, uh, there was there was uh the joint he did with Genuine. Nah, it's the other one. Uh, the one he did with Diddy. Nah, the other one. Uh. Yo, bro, it's it's cool. <laughs> we go back to you. I probably know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, um. So you grew up. You you were you started getting into to Biggie yeah, and, and Nas and yeah. Tupac. How how did you feel like when when you heard that Biggie died that day? I mean, like, I was young. He was young. You like, know, and around you, that around that time, I lost my brother. You okay. know, to some whack shit. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna put it out there. Fuck yeah, yeah. My cousin killed my brother. Yeah, yeah. You know, it sucks, but yeah, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was dealing with my own shit. I was young though. I was I was born in 1992. Okay. I was probably like what six eight. Around there, I'm pretty uh -huh. sure. Like, so it's like, I don't really. It didn't affect me. Like now, like I, you go to a funeral, you automatically start crying. Yeah. yeah. But when you were young, you like, the it fuck is going on yeah. here? You know. So it really didn't. So, affect so me. hearing about Biggie and Tupac dying, I mean, did you know at that age, like, like the music was gonna stop? Oh. Uh, think about that. You like the music. No, nah, I did you I, Like I keep it real. I wasn't really too involved in like the behind the scenes of the music. And okay. How is their legacy don't carry on. I really didn't know who they were like that. All okay. I heard was like their music because of my brothers and stuff. But I really, I can't really say that I sat there and thought about it like, oh, these they don't be a legend. Like this is, they just don't be yeah. a legend. Tupac's don't be a legend. I Do you feel like you should have, if you knew what you knew back then, would you? Oh, if I had this, if I had this mentality now, yeah, would you take it? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. I would. I would be. I think I would have been on. Yeah. <laughs> just saying, you know, like. So so tell me about like when you first started getting into engineering, like you know you wanted right, to do um, that. All right. So this all started about like I want to say five years ago, six years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, you know Ricky Mapes, right? No. Nah. No, no, not familiar. All right. So my brother Ricky Mapes, you know we um. I was throwing parties, I was a DJ. Mm -hmm. I remember I told you yeah. that I was a DJ, you know. Started DJing about 16, 17, you know, and just the love for music grew from there, you know, just seeing people dance on my beats and, and turning this shit up. Were you, were you making your own beats at the time? No, no, I'm just, you know, DJing, like, okay, just, okay. you know, just feeling that, that pulse of the bass in the club, ringing the walls and shit, you know. I've, I had a really early, early stardom, like mm -hmm. from probably like 17 to 19, I want to say. 
I was really traveling a lot of places, playing music, DJing, mm -hmm. and signing even autographs at that time. That's like, crazy. Yeah. I, I was in, I was very involved with the team bash scene, and you know what that team yeah, bash yeah, scene yeah, was yeah. at, like that back <laughs> in the day. Yeah, I was really involved with that. Like, I had my own team called Solid Out Productions. Okay, and we was really moving out here in the Bronx, and then everybody knew me as Swift Money. Swift Money, that was your DJ yeah, name. Yeah, too? that was Swift my, okay. that was my DJ name. <laughs> Swift Money, I still had our productions. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, and then um, it went from I still our productions. I got into, sp well, I've been playing sports all my life, so okay. that's that's yeah. this is so much to tell you. Like, I don't. No, wanna, no, go ahead. Oh, take so, your time. Um, take your time. Take your time. I've been playing sports all my life. At that time, when I started I still our productions, I was playing baseball. I got signed to the Texas Rangers, formerly, by okay. the way. Um, a lot of people don't know that. All right. uh, um, I broke my ankle playing rugby for high school. Wow. And that ended my career everywhere. And, well, was that um, like a scholarship that you had to? Um, I signed a deal, like a little double-A deal okay. with them to like, travel to the yard, to their team out there, their camp and stuff. And rugby really just ruined all of that. Yeah. But um, that's when... I start. I was already doing the production thing. I started out productions. I was like throwing parties and stuff like that. And slowly, I started getting into the DJ because I would mm -hmm. see my friends DJ yeah. and stuff like that. So I was like, you know what? I like this. So yeah. From there, the whole aspect of creating music and how did you put this together? How engineers put this together? Yeah. Like at that time, I didn't even know what an engineer was. Yeah. Had no studio etiquette. I never been to a studio. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Never been to the studio, and it was just like, I want to learn about this. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, financial reasons. Yeah. I wasn't able to pursue none of that, and you know, I had to stick to throwing parties and just become a DJ. And yeah. I got involved with the club scene, and then that's when recently, honestly, I want to say September, I joined Full Sail University. Okay. Uh, and well, what is, what is that for? Full, Full Sail University yeah. is a music school in, in Florida. Okay. But I was doing online classes, and that's when, you know, I started, you know, just pursuing the engineering aspect. But before that, I was, I'm like jumping all over the place. Sorry. No, no, no. Take, take um, your time. Before that, I was already, you know, I managed Ricky Mapes. Okay. Like five years ago, we was, I was managing him. I had my own label all right. called The Tradition Inc. The um, uh, Tradition Inc. Yeah, the okay. Tradition Inc. Okay. Had my own label and um, yeah, I was manager artist. I would be in the studio with them. I build that proper studio editor. I know what to do. And then I was just like, yo, like, I see myself not only being a DJ but soon becoming an engineer. And mm -hmm. is DJing going to be my past or is it going to be with me at the time? And at the time, yeah, I wanted to keep DJing like twenty, twenty one. Yeah. I wanted to keep DJing, but. You know, once, I'd say like three years passed, certain situations happened. Mm -hmm. I started to feel like, yo, I'm losing the love for DJing, you know, like. And everything was going to your engineer, engineering, engineering and being behind the boards and, mm -hmm. you know, creating music from, from, from scratch, yeah. building that foundation. Like, it's, it's amazing, like, yeah. what you can do with a Pro Tools session or a studio session in general. Yeah. Yeah. Real, real quick, then, now that we're on, you know, being, you being a DJ back in the day, how do you feel about Serato now? Did you did you start on twelves or um, I, start, I started I started CDJs or I practice honestly. I, I started as a digital DJ. Okay. Um, right. with my my stepfather Celos. Um, okay. He used to DJ parties with little C. You know the CDs. Mm -hmm. um, and you yeah. put the CDs yeah. on each yeah. side. CDs, you yeah, mix, CDs, yeah. CDs, yeah. And then um, from there. I, I I knew some a guy from Queens. He started showing me how to use techniques and stuff, mm -hmm. and then that's when I started getting into using 45s okay. and stuff like that. And then that's when um I went I like you have to stay digital because yeah. you're in the era of digital. Like digital takes over everything now. I think know? the fundamentals yeah. are still from the back in the day. No, systems. of course, yeah, definitely. But, it's so much easier on you to yeah. travel and do everything by yourself. Exactly. With so you know, yeah. you have to you have to force yourself to work on that. You know. Mm -hmm. So I, I I started DJing on Serato. Serato's amazing. That's yeah. like the best program. That, that so have is. you DJed um, lately? Have you DJed lately? Lately, yeah. no. But I have. Are you I retired? You have, I stopped you DJing. I stopped DJing. I want to say November, right? November. Yeah, November around there. I want to say. And well, yeah, but yeah, this year, last year. Um, 
16, that's just fresh. Yeah, I, I stopped DJing on but You know, people still hit me up to DJ. Yeah, but I say yeah, I don't want to do it, but like 420, I have an event. All right. And I'm just doing it for the sake of him reaching out to me okay, and okay. him, you know, giving me that blessing. You never think you were gonna get back into it, you know? You don't think? You're I really, uh, honestly, I don't know. Probably in the future. Okay. But I just don't like how the game is going right now. DJ game is is very is very do trash you, right now. Do you feel like how I feel like I feel like anybody can wake up the next day and be like, you know, what, I want to DJ. They yeah, can pick it up. And then, anybody can DJ. Anybody. But, can. Of course, but you can't blame them. Like one thing I used to do, I used to bash those people. I used to, be, I was very like a jackass, and mm-hmm. I used to say, "Yo, like fuck these niggas. They not DJs." This and I used to bash them. But you can't blame them. You have, you have all the technology in the palm of your hands. You're going to use it. So, kudos to them. You know, I'm proud that they're using that technology. But they have to remember that this is still an art, and a lot of people don't don't Thank understand you. that. That mm-hmm. DJ people feel like. I could become a DJ just because. No, this is an art. This is a, a, a thing that you learn. Mm-hmm. It took me seven years to become what I am now yeah. as a DJ. Like, if I could be on the boards, I, like, I mean, turntables, I'm, I'm ripping it because yeah. this is what I do. And not just pressing you know, buttons. Exactly. Like these other like, guys I'm, are doing I'm this. scratching. Yeah. I'm doing all that. I'm blending live. Like, a lot of these DJs out here, and it's not to bash them, so no, don't yeah. get me wrong, but a lot it's of just these like DJs the, out like here. The art is not yeah. there. The art is a lot of there. these DJs out here, they don't even know how to mix. And it's like, you got these promoters that, you know, I respect their hustle. You got these promoters that's talking about, yo, like, um, send me a mixtape yeah. before I could book you. But yeah. it's like, bro, I could edit everything that's messed up on that mixtape. Yeah. And it's like, bro, like, use your mind. What I'll do as a promoter, I'll be like, all right, yo, bro, I'll give you a 15-minute set. Come DJ for me. 30 minutes set so you can get your shit across. Mm-hmm. Come DJ for me. And now I see what you do yeah, now. Can yeah. you entertain the crowd? Can you blend? Mm-hmm. Can you mix? Can you do shit? If mm-hmm. you can't do that, I don't want you. That's it. You, you failed. Yeah. Feel me? But that's the shit. And now it's all about, yo, if this nigga got 40 people he could bring to the club. That, that's it. He, that's it. He's booked. Yeah, he's booked. He's booked for sure. Like, he's mm-hmm. booked and he's got to pay top dollar. And the nigga's trash. He's, br- he's and bringing then you got 40, a nigga. 40 people in here guaranteed. Exactly. And then you got a nigga that's bringing 10. That's nice. He's only he's bringing not 10 people. Book. Yeah. And he's not in a book. Why? Because he's only bringing 10 people. Like he said, feel me? Like zone, um, zero set. Yeah. Feel me? So it's just like, yeah, man. So that's really what really turned me away from.